Hey everybody, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a confusing line of Ruby code that I found while working on a program today. I extracted the confusing line of code and rewrote it a bit to disguise the original program. So this class I wrote here, test difficult method, encompasses the same logic and syntax of this confusing code that I found today. Now what I found confusing about it was that this return statement right here in material linear feet is not really obvious in the way and the order that the interpreter would read the arguments on this line. So for example, we've got this return statement right here and an if statement and this or statement. Uh, which one is going to take precedence? How is this going to be read by the Ruby interpreter? For example, is this or going to be read first? So it's default linear feed amount or nil. And how does the if statement get processed with this? Does it return every time like this? Return kind of like a, it was a function and then the if statement would always run and then it would return just the value of this if statement evaluation regardless? Or does it only run the return statement with this value default linear feed amount or nil if the material category code is C. Well, it's not really obvious what it is, or you'd have to know a little bit about Ruby and how it processes the order of operations to be fully certain about how this line would run. And I know it's kind of silly to examine this uh, because it, it was a working piece of code when I ran across it. So I doubt that the previous developer would write this in a way where it would always return and not get to the second line, but we don't know that for sure. And well, actually we don't know that for sure without some knowledge of Ruby or without some having tested the situation like this before. But it's important that we know how something like this will behave so that we write working code the first time every time and that's easily readable to ourselves in the future and other developers who might be working on this project. So let's try some different inputs into this function right here and see how the program behaves. So in the first case I have default linear feed amount to 25 and category is C so this if statement should evaluate to a true uh, let's see what happens to the rest of the line, how it interprets that. And the result is 25. It's returning default linear feed amount, which would be this. Okay. So now let's set this to nil so that this or expression will evaluate to nil or nil, essentially two falses. Nil or nil would return nil. Let's see if we get nil from this, which I anticipate that we would. Okay, so it returned nil, which would be the value of this. Actually, to, to check that the second condition of this or got met, why don't we change this to uh, a different value like that. We'll call it something else. And then this should be probably second value, I think. Okay, so it worked like that. Now what happens if we make this the criteria for this if statement uh, untrue? We'll make this a false by uh, changing the input. So will it still try to return the result of this or will it go to the second line individual units dot sum? Let's find out. And it looks like it got to the individual units dot sum because the sum of these individual units would be 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 30. So that tells me that the if is uh, being processed first on this line. So really the, the correct order of operations that I'm seeing would be something like this. So the if statement is getting processed to see if it has a true value. And then if it's true, it processes the return statement. The return statement then acts like this whole expression with the or 
is being passed into it. So it would be default linear feed amount or second value. If default linear feed amount is a nil or is false, it will return second value. But if material category code is uh, equals C is false, then it will go on to the next line of code. Let's, uh, let's try to rerun one of our tests again to see uh, what we get. So I'll make the if statement evaluate to a true. And we'll keep default linear feed amount uh, a value that's false. And we should get second value. So it would be, this would be true. So we'll drop down to the return. This will be false. So it will return this second thing in the or. And it returns second value as we expected. Now, I kind of don't like the way this line of code originally looked without parentheses or uh, kind of in a way where you would have to know this, the order of operations that Ruby would interpret this. I, I really think that glancing this over, it, took, it would take a little bit more thinking than you would have to do just to kind of untangle this in your mind if you're reading this at a later time. I think the adding parentheses makes this a little bit more clear, but I think another way that you could write this that would be easier to read would be to move this if statement and try not to use the one line or shortcut. So I think this would be better read like this. And the only reason I feel that way is because you've got this or expression in here. So if the return value was less complicated, uh, I would be totally okay having it on one line. So if it was just something like this, where there was no second value, I think this type of return is something that you see a lot more commonly in Ruby code and would be acceptable. But because you had that second value in there with the or, makes, it makes it a little bit more confusing to read. But that's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, go ahead and write in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this. One other thing that I want to comment on is this individual units.sum has an or condition attached to it as well. And this is how it was in the original line of code that I was looking at. Uh, you really don't need this uh, or nil. And that's because whenever you use the sum, uh, it'll return a value even if everything here uh, is nil. So let's, let me give you an example. Nil, nil, dot sum. Whoops, that's interesting. Uh, I realized I just copied this incorrectly. You need to compact here, which would get rid of any nil values. So if you compact, which reduces that to an empty array, uh, an empty array dot sum would give you a zero. So with the compact here, you really don't need the nil. Now the one case where this might cause you a problem is if individual units is num null. There's no compact on nil object. So you'd probably have to do a safe navigation operator on that. So writing it like this would probably be safer and protect your code from an exception. All right, that's all I have for today's video. If you like this, give this video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips on Ruby. See you in the next video.